We just had the NBA All-Star Game, which signals the unofficial midpoint of the NBA season. I thought it was a bit lacking this year, but tell me what you think in the comments. Still though, the All-Star Break is a natural spot to <sighs> catch our breath and check in on where everything stands in terms of end of season awards. You know, who's leading the pack, who's falling behind. In this video, I think it's time we take a look to see what the leaders are in categories like Rookie of the Year, Most Valuable Player, Most Improved Player, and a whole lot more. Welcome back to the Half Court Report, everybody. I'm Troy. Glad you could tune into the channel today. I make NBA videos like this all the time, so if that's your thing, and it must be if you're watching this video, right? Then click that subscribe button. And while you're here, make sure to leave a like before you go. It really helps out the channel in a big, big way. Before we begin, let's just all agree that some of you are going to be really angry at some of the selections. Maybe you're going to think the guy I picked for MVP was the wrong choice. Maybe you're going to think the guy I picked for most improved player wasn't the most improved at all. So I'm going to need you to do me a favor, just take a deep breath, count to 10, and understand that every single one of these selections you're about to hear is 100% right, and there's no room for debate. <laughs> okay, now that we're clear on that, let's get into it. Why don't we start with a category I think we can all legitimately agree on, that's LaMelo Ball being Rookie of the Year. And if your pick is somebody other than LaMelo, then you are either not paying attention to the NBA this season, or you're a hater. Plain and simple, you're a hater, and you are guzzling down a 12-ounce bottle of Haterade. Mmm, hope it tastes good, because LaMelo is leading all rookies in points, rebounds, assists, and total steals. He's been excelling in the starting lineup for the Charlotte Hornets. He made history already by becoming the youngest player to ever get a triple-double. Ball was named Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month in January and in February. His adjustment to the NBA has been basically seamless, and he's a big reason that Charlotte is in the playoff race. Midpoint of the season, it's LaMelo hands down. Now, for each category, I'm going to throw in some other names you might want to consider. For Rookie of the Year... Maybe Tyrese Halliburton of the Sacramento Kings. Maybe Emmanuel Quickly, a.k.a. IQ, a.k.a. Manny Quick of the New York Knicks. Some of y'all out there may even want to say Anthony Edwards, but I think his team is so bad that he'd have to average about 30 a game while playing blindfolded for the rest of the season for me to even consider him for Rookie of the Year. Next up, let's talk MVP. And since you're seeing a picture of Joel Embiid's smirking face right now, then obviously he's my pick. Voter fatigue with Giannis Antetokounmpo is a real thing. It's kind of like when Tom Hanks won back-to-back -back Oscars for Philadelphia and Forrest Gump. Then the next year, he came out with Apollo 13, which was a good movie, but he can't win the Oscar three years in a row. That's how it is with Giannis. And Embiid is a deserving candidate. Top player on one of the top teams in the Philadelphia 76ers. The seven-footer is registering career highs and points field goal percentage, three-point percentage, and if he keeps up this pace with points, he's going to be the first center to average 30 points per game in four decades. I'll say it again, four decades. We're talking Ronald Reagan presidency, people. Embiid is an elite defender, and in the six games this year when he didn't play, the Sixers simply did not win. Other names I have my eye on for MVP include Nikola Jokic, LeBron James, Chris Paul, yeah, CP3, I said it. I also wouldn't be mad if Steph Curry got another MVP as well because the Warriors are a 25-win team without him. Just saying. This next one is going to be quick. Sixth man of the year, Jordan Clarkson. Clarkson is the NBA's leading bench scorer at 18 points per game. He's the best bench player by a mile, and he's doing it for the Jazz, who are one of the best teams in the NBA. Other guys to consider for the award in case Clarkson, I don't know, burns his hands on a hot iron and is out for the rest of the year. Maybe <sighs> Terrence Ross of the Magic and um, Thaddeus Young of the Bulls. And <sighs> that's all I got. 
Next up is most improved player, and that's always a fun one. I'm going to give it to Julius Randle. Hold up. Excuse me. That's all-star Julius Randle. He is producing career bests in points, rebounds, assists. Did you know that this dude shot 28% from three last year? And you know what he's shooting now? Almost 41%. Julius Curry, is that you? I think it's funny how all the people who are hating on Randall are the biggest Randall fanboys right now. It is hilarious. The Knicks are making the playoffs, and a big, big reason for that is Julius Randall. Other names I like for this award, Jeremy Grant of the Pistons, Gary Trent Jr. of the Blazers, Kyle Anderson of the Grizzlies, and Christian Wood of the Rockets, but he got injured, so basically no chance for him. That's too bad. And what about Defensive Player of the Year? Well, I'm going to show the Jazz some love again. Rudy Gobert won this award twice already, and he's in line for it again. I don't have to tell you this. He is among the best rim protectors in the league. He's logging a career-best 2.7 blocks per night. The Jazz rank near the top of the league in defensive rating and points allowed. Gobert is such a beast in the paint, and in addition to providing strong help defense, he is among the NBA's best ISO defenders. Other names that I think have a chance, but not a big chance, include Miles Turner of the Pacers, Ben Simmons of the Sixers, and Hashim Thabit. You're crazy. Okay, just wanted to make sure you were still paying attention. No way Miles Turner wins it. And finally, the award you've all been waiting for, Coach of the Year. This is otherwise known as the Never Luke Walton Award, and it's going to be Quinn Snyder putting that Duke Law degree to good use by coaching the Utah Jazz to the best record in the NBA. Man, what is this, a Utah Jazz video? I mean, come on. Snyder has the Jazz playing like legit contenders. Utah is the only team that ranks in the top five in both offensive and defensive efficiency. Plus, Quinn always has them ready to compete, and they look like they know what they're doing out on the floor. Other names that have done a yeoman's job, though, would include Thomas Thibodeau Jr. and Glenn Rivers from the Knicks and Sixers, respectively. Yeoman's job, I like that. So guys, let me know in the comments who you've got on your awards ballots. Be sure to drop a like on this video. Be sure to hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. Fresh content all the time, multiple times a week. Once again, my name is Troy. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.